All right, what is up guys? So today I decided to do another recap video on the EJ20X for you guys um, because I've seen a lot of the same questions in, in a lot of the uh, videos I've done. So I just kind of want to do it kind of thoroughly and then try to explain in depth if I can about some of the questions you guys have been asking. So to start right off the bat, your 255 that you blew up in your Legacy, in your Outback, in your WRX, that's anywhere from like, you know, 05 Legacy GT all the way up to like 09 Legacy GT and 08 to WRX all the way up to like 14 WRX. You know, same thing goes for the Outback XTs that were in the, that shared all the same electrical components and all that stuff like that as a Legacy GT. Um, all, it's, it's all interchangeable, so the EJ20X and Y are both interchangeable with those chassis. You can use either or. When you get the EJ20X, it's going to have a flex plate on it. That's because it came out, came out of an automatic in Japan. These motors, typically, they're supposed to have between like 45,000 to 60,000 miles on them. Who really knows? Um, I've gotten some motors with, there's like, they'll have like a sticker on the timing cover themselves, it'll be in Japanese and then it'll actually be written in like what the actual kilometers of that car was when the motor was pulled out. Whether it's true, I can't verify that. I'm not the one that pulls this motor, so I couldn't be able to tell you. So next, um, the 20X obviously by its name is a 2.0. It's EJ20. Um, it revs out pretty dang high for one. It revs out, I mean, I've gotten it up to 70, 100 RPM and nothing blew up, nothing grenaded, it was good. Um, as for power wise, I couldn't, really, I can't really give you like a number of how much power you can actually make. I can tell you that I had this thing over boosting and holding 25 PSI throughout a whole entire pole, especially when I was beating on it at the track. And it did not lift the heads, it did not grenade, it did not have any fine knock, feedback knock, nothing like that. Now, I was running the VF52 turbo and Pretty much after like 21 psi 22 psi it kind of becomes a hair dryer it's past it's, it's a peak efficiency and it's kind of just pushing a lot more hot air so take that with a grain of salt it probably really wasn't fully making 25 psi like uh to its maximum efficiency but it still held on apparently to the ecu and the cob and all that other stuff all my gauges it all said 25 psi take that with a grain of salt um I can tell you with my own experience, I've had bad luck with these motors. I've gotten them straight and dropped them in the same day and they had rod knock. They'll have like a bad cylinder sometimes. Um, you know, it's, it's like buying a junkyard motor. You never know what you're gonna really get till you actually have it and you put it in. Um, you can test the compression outside of the car. If you have a battery, you have a starter, maybe you have like a trans case, like a half of one thing like I have up there. I have a half a trans case where I could just bolt it on the whole foul housing of the engine or the actual engine itself and then put the starter in and then jump it. But I normally don't do that. I kind of just risk it and then just see if it turns over and then slap them in the car and I get what I get. Um, this one I have now has lasted four track events and some daily driving. Um, you know, as you guys saw in some of the videos I already have posted, it went up against M3, Supra, Supras and stuff like that. You know, it does it does fairly well. Um, this year we had a lot of problems understeering, so I bought the custom coilovers and everything like that. All right, but back to the motor. Um, so it comes with a nine to five to one compression ratio that is a lot higher compared to the eight to four to one in the regular 255 motors. Um, you're also gonna get dual ABCS, meaning you'll have an intake ABCS and exhaust ABCS. Now, what I have done is I have left the exhaust ABCS unplugged and I had it tuned specifically for that. So my tuner knew exactly that, okay, you know, it's pretty much just free, free floating. Um, he and I discussed that when I do the timing on this, which will be next week, I'm going to be taking the exhaust cams and clocking them back two teeth to make up for the float in the belt or in the cams basically because of the non adjustability on that note. Now, you can run um, dual ABCS on any of these cars. 
iWire does make a kit. You will need a JDM ECU and you will probably need the JDM intake manifold harness, which I have one over there. Um, get just bolted onto the manifold from where it comes. Now, with that being said, you have to like literally run the ABCS wires up from the side of the block, put them together. And then after that, you have to run them inside of the car and then to the ECU and pin them to the ECU. Um, I haven't done it. Like I said, my tuner, Jake, he's, uh, he's great at what he does and he's been able to tune this car no problem. Um, like I've always complained about, it didn't have a lot of low end. Uh, that VF52, in a sense, is kind of big for what I wanted to do with that motor. Um, I am still going to be getting a top feed um, fuel setup because I know that the side feeds are kind of, they're just not as reliable. Um, I've had plenty of problems with them. Like I didn't drive this car for like maybe two, three months. Yeah, probably two months. And one of the injectors seals just randomly went bad on its own and started pissing fuel everywhere. Uh, it's not a good time. So personally, I think that if you have an 08 and up WRX and you have that manifold, you're the bomb.com because you already have like a little bit more of an advantage. Now, this EJ20X, it does, however, come with um, TGV deletes from factory from Japan. Now, basically that just takes out that whole entire butterfly valve on the inside and gets rid of it. And on top of that, there are a whole entire section in there is all completely wide open. It doesn't have that little slot in there, that aluminum slot um, that would be like right in front of the injector port. So it's a lot more free flowing. So if you did want to run um, your side feed injectors on your legacy, you can, you're more than capable of doing that. Now, along with that, um, your wiring harness, you're going to be able to, you're going to need from your USDM. So your USDM manifold. So you can just bolt that right on. I just recommend unbolting it from your old block, the whole manifold, all the fuel, fuel rails, everything all together at once, pop it off. Take off the ej 20 xs one, bam, and then swap the uh, USDM one on, and then it all direct plugs in play. All of the sensors are still the same. The cam position sensors, the crank sensor, the ABCS solenoids, they're all the same from the 255. They are all the same. They have the same part numbers and everything. Because I know that that was asked in a few of these videos, and like I, I don't know how to reiterate it anymore in the fact that they are all the same. You don't have to worry about swapping those out. Now, when it comes to the cam gears, if you don't want to run the 220X heads with the dual ABCS and you want, don't want it to be free floating, that's fine. You could swap on your 255 heads. Um, I used to basically be, you'd have a hybrid block. Realistically, you're not going to have any power advantage on doing that whatsoever because you're, you'd be better off running a 205 short block with two O heads and have them bored and polished and, poured and polished out so that way it would actually flow very well through there. That's how you get the high revving, you know, hybrid blocks that everybody makes. Um, doing it backwards, I don't really know, because I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you, like, oh, it's going to be great. I don't really know what that would do. You could try it. Um, people do it and their cars run fine. I don't know what they make for power wise. I can tell you that my car if I were to say what it feels like and what we've kind of estimated through the, the dyno jet like graph that you can see on the computer because I always do street tunes I don't do actual dyno tunes because you get a different load rating on the street than you do a dyno so for me I don't really care about the numbers I more or less just care that it's running as good as it's supposed to and the whole entire weight of the car is on the pavement and it's getting its full abuse right then and there um, but like I was saying power wise I would say I'm in the 305, maybe the 315 range. It's minus full bolt-on, minus injectors. Um, you know, I, right now I put in that twin scroll kit, the VF44, with an external wastegate kit that dumps back in the uh, downpipe. Shout out JT yet again for that. Um, I'm pretty stoked to get that tune. But besides all of that with the 20X, you shouldn't really have any problems with it when you go to do the timing belt. You use a regular 2.5 or 2.0 timing kit. Um, you're gonna need a 2.0 water pump 
As for the oil pump, I haven't taken it off yet, so I cannot verify for you guys what exact oil pump you're supposed to use. If you were to replace it, I would assume that it's a regular, you know, you can probably bolt on a 2.5 SDI pump, um, or you could put, use the JDM one, obviously, because it's a JDM motor, I would assume. It all has the same bolt pattern. Now, along with all that, um, it's when you get these motors, they also have the cylinder four mount already on them. Normally you'll see the bung in the back of the cylinder four head. You can literally just cut into your heater hose line because that's what you're supposed to do. The one that comes off the water pump line, there's a metal tube that goes on top of the head. It comes back to the heater core. You're gonna wanna cut that line, tap it into there, hook it up, and you're good. That's the cylinder four mount, that's all it is. You can go to Napa, they actually have a heater, heater hose kit um, for like literally 20 bucks. When it comes with the T-fitting, I recommend you get an aluminum one. That's like five bucks. Um, it's an aluminum 5 T T-fitting. 10 out of 10 recommend it. You just get yourself some 5 ace rubber tubing, heater core tubing, and then you run it up all the way to that T-fitting and then you connect it to up top with some clamps and you're good to go. That'll detrimentally help your motor a lot. I would really suggest that if you guys want to help preserve your motor a little bit more, the best thing you can do is get equal length headers so it gets the cylinder fours exhaust gases out as fast as possible just like the rest of them are um, it's very beneficial now on top of all that let's talk about the internals of the motor the ej20x comes with a nitride crank from factory yes a nitride crank it comes with hardened rods and it's said to have forged piston crowns i don't know how you can have a non-forged piston head but yet have forged piston crowns, so basically like the top moldings up top. I, I just don't, maybe it's with the stamping, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you for a fact that it is, but it's what I've heard from a lot of tuners and it's what I've heard from a lot of the forums that are online because I wanted to verify some of this information with you guys so that you know right out of the gate. Now, when you go to take off that flex plate and if you have like a standard um, car like mine, five speed or six speed, whatever, make sure you use the clutch that is for your transmission. That's what you need to use. That's a flywheel you need to use. All the flywheels are pretty much the same bolt pattern. Not pretty much, they are the same bolt pattern. The only difference is it's the flywheel itself and the clutch and the type of clutch it is. So you can have a full style clutch, which is in the older Rexes, or you can have a push style clutch, which is in all of the new style cars. Um, the SDIs, I believe, still have a full style clutch because their fork pushes forward and pulls everything back. Um, that's why you hear of a lot of people having those clutch forks break because over time they get weak, it's normal, they bend, they break. Um, as for the rest of it, there's not really much else to talk about. Um, as for longevity wise, like I said, I've had this car on the track multiple times. It's probably got about 30 to 40 hours of actual track time being beaten and abused nonstop. I change my oil every single time, after every single event. It is held tried and true so far. I haven't lost any compression in, each, in any of the cylinders. Uh, there have been 155 to 160 across the whole board. So yes, when you get these motors and you test for compression, you're gonna want somewhere in the 150 to 160 range per cylinder. That's normally what these have because again, they are high compression. Um, and as soon as you put this motor in your car, you need to have a tune for it. You, you do not understand. If you go out and you just beat the living crap out of it, you're probably gonna grenade it. It's gonna be trying to take away a lot of timing because first off, you're gonna be dumping a crap ton of fuel in and it's either gonna be not enough or it's gonna be too much because Again, these are high compression motors. High compression motors handle a lot differently and need to be tuned timingly, timing wise a lot different compared to a lower compression motor. I'm not saying that the Duggar X you know, 8 to 4 is bad. I'm just saying that when you go to a 95 to 1, it's going to need a lot more fuel. It's going to need a lot more timing adjustment um, than a just standard drop in 255 motor. Now, I've gotten some comments on some of the forums saying that leaving the exhaust AVCS unplugged is hacked up and this, that, and the other thing. In my personal opinion, I don't think so. Um, if 
the, if it's tuned correctly and it's operating as it should, you don't have check engine lights, they're not just deleted, and you're actually doing it all correctly, and the car's running healthy, then it is what it is. I have worked on plenty of these swaps already to tell you that every single one that I have done without the exhaust ABCS unplugged, they still handle great, they still take up the abuse, they still hold plenty of power. Now, the biggest key that you're gonna to wanna to be able to do is to retard both of those exhaust cam gears. You're gonna to wanna to put them both back to T. That's gonna get you a little bit more low end because you get more adjustment out of the intake ABCS cam gears, or cams. Um, besides that, you know, as for like turbo setup and all that stuff, all you have to do is unbolt that JDM setup, that twin scroll setup, and you can swap on your single scroll headers, your up pipe and your turbo from your factory 255. There's nothing crazy that has to be done. Just unbolt everything, swap it on the new motor, you're good to go. The uh, oil feed line for the turbo will still be in the same spot. Your coolant feed line is still gonna be in the same spot. You can swap over the tubes if you feel like it. Now the crossover tube that goes for the coolant the aluminum one up top, that one should still be the same. I would double check that because I haven't done one of these. Actually, I have done one of these in a 08 WX, and that one was completely fine when we left it. So you should be good on that. As for any other miscellaneous stuff, um, you're gonna have coolant lines coming off of your coolant ports, those black tubes that come up through the block. Those ones you're gonna to want to still connect to your coolant expansion tank and your turbo and your um, throttle body as well. It's just very beneficial if you live in New England or like Colorado or something like that, like where it's really cold out, it's really important that if you're gonna be daily driving this, that you have that coolant port all set up and flowing through that throttle body. Now, next year, I actually want to see if it'll make a difference if I decide to loop the coolant port instead of going to the throttle body it just goes back to the actual port that it came from and i just tie those two together and just see if it'll change any of the um the actual readings or like maybe give me a little bit better cool air through there um, because you're just taking hot coolant really and you're plumbing it through the throttle body and from my assumption and with some of these like people from you know australia and whatnot when they take them out of their cars um, they get a lot cooler air through the whole entire system and I want to see if that's a true thing or not so you know stay up to date with that because I'll be able to inform you guys as for the oil pan and pickup tube I will be showing you guys what that looks like out of this motor um, next week when I do my Moroso oil pan and pickup tube along with the timing kit that same day um, as for that as for anything else like your motor mounts are the same They'll drop in just in just into place just fine. You know, the um actually that really should be it. Like the harmonic balancer, you could just use the same one that was on there already. Um all the seals and stuff like that, like the uh front crank seal and the rear main seal. I would probably go with 2.0 stuff because those are gonna be closest in size, I would assume, because again it's a 2.0 block, the crank's made for a 2.0 yada 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 so on and so forth now your valve cover gaskets i'm pretty sure if you use the 20x heads you're gonna have to get um, 20x valve cover gaskets imported from japan because they have i think they have a different cutout because of the uh, dual abcs so keep that in mind if you go to take those valve cover gaskets off um, i've personally taken them off and thrown them back on and they haven't leaked but I also was very vigorous and cleaned everything up before I did that. Threw a little bit of Fujimon on it. And then um, they were still soft. They weren't like cracked, brittle or anything like that. So I was like, you know what, it's fine to reuse them. I won't deal with this just now. They're not too hard to do anyways, because there's plenty of room in that engine bay versus like a 255. Well, versus like a WRX chassis that doesn't really have much side room or like an Outback XT chassis where it's a little bit more narrow. Um, along with that, the coil packs, your spark plugs, you can use all that from the 255. They're gonna be the same as what's on the JDM motor already when it comes. Um, as for the EJ20X with the secondary air pump, um, just make sure all you guys with your secondary air pumps, you keep your um, right side like pump itself 
even if you don't have it fully connected and everything like that, you need the barometric pressure sensor that's inside of that or else it will not adjust the atmospheric pressure at all. And that's not something you wanna deal with because then your AFRs cannot adjust based on elevation and your car will run really funny one day and you won't understand what's going on. You'll think it's a math problem, maybe a math problem instead. It's none of that. It's really a barometric pressure sensor. Um, there's links online that you can go and find. They'll actually cut them and just leave a little square sensor itself. And then that's that. Um, I really recommend you guys that you actually keep that because when your tuner tunes that car and they're just like, well, the atmospheric pressure's not changing. That's a little bit weird, but whatever. They're probably, they might overlook it. They might not think about it. Jake's the one who informed me of that. So just shout out to Jake for um, really kind of educating me a little bit more about these motors. Um, that's really much, that's really it for these, these motors. If you guys still have any more questions, feel free to ask them. I am pretty sure I covered everything here. Um, it's possible I missed something else. You know, your access point is still the same. It can be tuned with the USD MECU. Now, if you go to the JDM ECU, you're gonna have to get it tuned. Um, I'm not sure if who can actually tune the JDM ECUs or if you have to get a piggyback one. I'm not sure. I've never dealt with that stuff kind of yet. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You know, as for vacuum lines and stuff like that, it's all the same. You can swap everything over from your 255 block on the 220X. It'll be the same. Um, you're not, your knock sensor is going to be the same. I mean, you can swap it over if it makes you feel better, just so you know it works. Um, honestly, that should really be everything that you guys should be looking for. You know, if you do plan to run the twin scroll setup, I recommend that you go online first or you find somebody that can actually weld you up a downpipe because you're going to need a downpipe made for your car to run the twin scroll setup. Um, Tommy Oka. They actually have a downpipe for an 02 to 07 Rex. I haven't found one for a Legacy yet. So that was the reason why I held off on going to school again for so long because last time I welded up my own downpipe and it was just a pain in the neck. And I'm not like a perfect, perfect welder by any means, but I can weld decently when I take my time, just like anything anybody else can do. You know, if you take your time, it can come out just right. Um, when I did mine, I just use the flange that you can buy online. They make an actual VF38 flange, where if you ran it from the EJ20X, you can actually use that. Um, you know, the VF38 comes with the 20X, that's why I was saying that. Now, one last thing I'll tell you guys about. So if you buy, the Gen 1 is the one without the secondary air pump. The Gen 2 has a secondary air pump, costs a little bit more, you'll see that. Um, supposedly the Gen 2 has a better oiling system, I guess it has squirters on some of the um, on some of the cams and whatnot. I'm not sure. I have never pulled one of those apart to be able to tell you. Personally, I like these cheaper ones because I mean, I I'm not made of a million bucks. I mean, I have my job and then I come here and work on projects like this. And in all honesty, like if I'm gonna go beat the living crap out of my own stuff for my own pleasure and hobby. I'd rather kind of do it on the cheaper end for motor wise, because I know what the limits are of it for the most part. When we go E85, that'll be an awesome time. Um, I can't wait for that to be quite honest with you. I really want to get to that point. I just really need a top feed setup before I go ahead and do that. Um, there have been guys who have been making 400 horsepower on the dyno with these motors. So, if that doesn't tell you something about these cheap and crappy motors that everybody keeps talking about, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm going based off my own personal experience. I'm not a big YouTuber guy, anything like that, hopefully yet. You know, hopefully we grow into something one day. But like I said, I'm just here to help you guys out and inform you, I'll answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm just going down the line my own personal experience to help you guys out so that way if you guys wanted to go out and do track events like I do, or you guys wanted to get further deep into like Subarus yourselves and like work on them, I'll just show you guys what to do. Hopefully save you guys a couple bucks and hopefully make this generation a little more hands-on because a lot of us don't have the opportunities like that to be able to just be hands-on and just learn. Um, I think that's one of the best things that you can do in life is to just do it yourself. Even if you mess up, you deal with it, you learn from it, 
and you grow. That's literally what life is all about. You know, um, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for that. Wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the support of all my friends and stuff like that who pushed me to do this kind of stuff. It's, um, it's really good. It's really good. It's good for the community to help it grow. It's good for your own self-esteem. It's good for your own knowledge. Um, but like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content. Like I said, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm here anytime. I'll answer them if I can get to them. Um, I got to go work on the Miata now because I got to fix the EGR tube on it. But wait for next week. I'll have a video up for you guys for the whole entire timing kit and all that stuff like that so I can run you guys through it. And I hope you guys have a happy holiday. Stay safe. Peace.